once I'm Kathy E. Her. Welcome back to Cinderella Phenomenon. Before we begin this estranged adventure, don't forget to comment, leave a like, hit the subscribe button with your tongue, because why not? And let's just hop into this. Get it? Hop? Because Rod has a little bunny. Get it? No? Also, I've just realized that Sebastian's bunny is red. Same color as Sebastian. I just thought I should point that out. It is still dawn when I wake up. As much as I want to continue sleeping, I have no choice but to get up and prepare for the day. The last thing I need is an agonizing lecture from the head maid. I have almost become accustomed to waking up this early, even if I do not enjoy it. As soon as my presentations are made, I begin to make my way towards Emma's room, should she wake early. I am about halfway there when I hear familiar voices. Standing far ahead of me are Sir Alcaster and Sir Mythos. Oh no. Are you sure this is going to work? Have a little faith in me, my friend. Friend? We are not friends. Sir Alcaster narrows his eyes, then turns abruptly to look at me. Ah, Miss Catherine, was it? No, it was Bubblegum. Sir Mythos, Sir Alcaster. Have you been eavesdropping, child? He has no reason to be angry at me. If they were talking about something confidential, they should not have been openly talking in the hallway. She has a point. I am on my way to Princess Emma's room, sir. That is why I am here. I coolly look at Sir Alcaster who looks like he's about to pot the vein. I cannot help but feel satisfied in his rare description. <laughs> Catherine, you evil devil. In just a few steps, he is suddenly looming over me. Oh no. Never mind. I have never seen Sir Alcaster look so angry before. What is going on? Rod, baby, please! Rod is now walking towards us with a scowl on his face. Sir Alcaster notices and quickly steps back. Just a little misunderstanding, your highness. Rod glances at me, his eyes narrowing. Great, I am so sure he is going to blame me for this too, even though I did nothing. Oh, what are you doing? Oh gosh. Much to my surprise, Rod puts himself between me and Sir Alcester. Uh, I don't like what he's doing. Are you alright, Catherine? No, I'm actually getting way concerned. He's he is worried about me? I'm worried about him. I slowly nod. Rod turns back to Sir Alcaster and Sir Mythos. If you don't have any business with Catherine, I will be taking her with me. Emma's already waiting for her. Sir Alcaster stares at me for a few moments before bowing down to Rod. Of course, your highness. Thank you. Rod turns to me again, his expression solemn. Shall we? We shall. He walks off before waiting for my reply. I look back at Sir Alcaster and, Myth and Sir Mythos one last time before chasing after him. Woo! The both of us spend the next few minutes walking in silence. Rod has said, not said a thing since my encounter with Sir Mythos and Sir Alcaster. Are you okay? Are you okay? Actually, I should be asking that. What? He's already asking, what? I'm fine. I'm fine. I am surprised by the look on Rod's face at my response. His expression is soft, so unlike his unusual scowl. Rod here is pretty worried about you, princess. Sebby! You adorable little thing. You adorable little thing. Rod glares at Sebby, his cheeks tinged pink. Sebby chuckles. Sorry, Rod, your things ring so loudly in your mind that I can't help but say them out loud. This is not the first time Sebi has told me about what Rod is thinking. Rod reaches out and pinches Sebi's face, his scowl returning. Ow, ow, I'm sorry, okay, but next time, try not to think too loudly. He said that Emma was waiting for me. I did not expect her to be up so early. Where is she? I lied. <gasps> what? 
he lied to help me out of that situation? Why are you helping me? Because while you're here, you are my responsibility. I may loathe the role, but I will still uphold it. I don't know how I feel about this, okay? Besides, you don't need a reason to help someone in need. Help someone in need. I remember Parfait and Delora telling me before that good, being good often involves helping others who are in need. Now that I've helped you, I've, I'll be taking my leave now. I have fancy lessons to attend. Rod starts to walk off, but then stops and turns back at me. Don't get yourself into more trouble. I won't be there all the time to save you. I can, I can protect myself, thank you very much. I glare at him and cross my arms. I am not some damsel in distress, your highness. I do not need your help. Thank you, Catherine. Rod snores before turning away from me and walking away. I, yeah, exactly what she said. I agree with Catherine. Later that day, I watch Emma finish her adequate lesson. I can tell that the teacher is impressed with her progress. Emma is able to correctly name all the glass and cut flea. She is not so slow a learner. I had come here earlier in the day to better teach Emma about proper dining etiquette. It turns out that my lessons was valuable. You have shown great improvement, your highness. I am glad that you have been diligent with your studies. No doubt you'll be ready for the ball soon. Emma smiles, her cheeks turning pink. Thank ya. I wouldn't have done it without the help of a friend. Emma glances at me briefly and smiles gently. I like really owe her a lot. This is wonderful. I am so glad you have such a dedicated friend, your highness. Friend? Is that what I am to her? I'm just a maid, man. You, you don't know. Maybe I'm being paid to be your friend. You never know. But princesses do not have maids as friends. A royal does not mingle with commoners, especially not with servants. Mother told me that before. Emma does not treat me as a maid, but she cannot possibly think me of me as a friend. Maybe she does. After the teacher gives Emma several books to study for their next lesson, she ends the lesson and excuses herself. Emma approaches me and grasps my hands. Oh gosh, why are you grabbing them? I don't like being touched. Thank you so much, Catherine. I would like wouldn't have passed this without your help. All I did was repeat things your teacher taught you. But you're like different. My face and I brought her. Different how? I like tend to get nervous on my lessons. My teacher's like so strict and intimidating. Like oh my gosh. I like cave underneath the pressure but with you hashtag bestie i like feel more comfortable around you it's probably because we're like you know the same age and your lessons feel like casual so thank you i'm like very grateful she looks down and at the ground shyly I hope it's all right that we can be friends, hashtag bestie. I furrow my eyebrows at her. Why would you even want to be friends with a maid? You're supposed to be making friends with the nobles, not the servants. Emma frowns and I can feel her deflate. She walks towards the window and sighs. I tried. They may not say anything, but I can feel them silently judging me. I wasn't born a princess, and I can feel them judging everything I do. They think I smile too much, that I'm not regal enough. They feel that I'm too clumsy or too cheerful. Well, Emma definitely does not act like a noble. I cannot say I blame the nobles for being skeptical of her. Being with them suffocates me. I do my best to act like a princess, but they all, but the way they all look at me... It is as if they're waiting for me to make a mistake. Then they'll all have an excuse to jeer at me. Every girl dreams to become an princess, and yet this is not my dream. 
I really just miss being a normal girl. I miss my freedom. I look at her, thoughtful. I think I can understand what Emma is feeling. Just like me, she was thrown into a world she was not ready to be a part of. Right now, we have no choice but to fit in. She never wanted my title in the first place, yet I accused her of stealing it. Have you told your mother how you feel? Emma shakes her head. No, not the king either. I don't want them to think I'm ungrateful. That's why I'm trying my best to become accustomed to all of this. I cross my arms. But you are not happy. I... I'm like not... Everyone just assumes that I'm happy because I smile a lot. She barely opens up to anyone, and yet she opened up to me. Had I been given the choice before I was cursed, I would never have listened to her. You should tell them how you feel rather than just keeping it to yourself. Otherwise, the stress will continue to accumulate on your shoulders. I wish I could, like, be more honest with them. I really do. I envy you for being able to speak your mind. She envies me? Emma takes a deep breath and sighs. The frown fades with a sigh and is quickly replaced with a fragile smile. I'm, like, sorry for ranting to you like that. I must have been bored you with my story. I used to get so annoyed with her, but now that I have seen this side of her, I suppose she is not as terrible as I at first thought. Oh, Catherine, you're changing. Oh, I remember that mother wanted to see me after my lessons today. Hashtag forgetful. Allow me to escort you to the queen then. Thank you. Days pass without any real comfort. I run into Sir Alcaster again in the hallway, but his eyes pass over me as if I am something to be ignored. Dolores, who has been ignoring me as she has been busy with other priorities, returned to the Martian yesterday to discuss something important with Parfait. It is not as if she has been any help since she came here. She mostly stays in my room while I run around doing errands for Emma and taking on other chores as they are handed to me. Right now I am headed to the palace gates as I hurry to meet Emma. She is going to, to she is going out to town to meet Victoria again, and I was told to meet her there. Here. Prin Catherine Oh it's Fritz, don't call me princess. I turn around to see Fritz walking in my direction. Ever since I told him to refer to me by my name, he has been stumbling over not using my title. I rarely see him, but when I do, we do not have much time to discuss anything. Can I help you with anything, Fritz? It has been a while. Have you managed to complete one of your good deeds? Days after I ha had originally run into Fritz, I managed to have a quick conversation with him regarding my curse. It has been a long time since that conversation happened. Recently, I have barely seen Fritz. I hear rumors that he has he has been reassigned somewhere outside the palace. I show him my pendant and point at the piece of the second glass slipper. I managed to get one several days ago. Catherine, that's wonderful. I knew that you could get one. Only two more and then I can break this curse. Ah, uh, Fritz, Miss Catherine, I did not think that the two of you were acquainted. We both turn our heads at the same time when Mithril's suddenly appears from around the corner, the unusual smile on his lips. Oh, it's you. They're Mithril's. Mm. Fritz, I believe Sir Alcaster is looking for you. Right. Sorry, Catherine. I must take my leave now, of course. Hmm. Fritz bows to Sir Mythos before walking off, leaving me alone with Sir Mythos. Oh, this can't be good. Run. <laughs> Mythos does not say anything, but continues to smile at me. His staring makes me feel incredibly uncomfortable. Is there something on my face? Excuse me. I curtsy and start 
to walk off when Sir Mithos calls my name. Catherine. Yes? I want to thank you for your hard work and dedication to our princess. I look at him, puzzled by his sudden gratitude. Don't worry, everything will soon be remedied. Excuse me? My apologies, I do not mean to keep you. He completely ignores my question. He dips his head slightly before turning and walking away, the smile still on his face. What was that all about? Should I be concerned? Rod and Emma are already waiting for me outside the carriage by the time I arrive at the palace gates. Rod has his arms crossed and looks at me irritable. His race is perversely stuck in that scowl, it seems. You are late. My apologies. You're so grumpy, but you've been late many times before too, Rod. Rod just shrugs his shoulders as he turns and heads into the carriage. Emma sighs before looking at me. Shall we? Of course. Town. The three of us sit in silence as the carriage rolls towards the town. The knight assigned to guard duty is sitting out front with the driver, watching for any disturbances. Emma glances forlornly out one window while Rod suddenly looks out the other as he rests his chin on the palm of his hand. I notice Emma pausing to glance at Rod every now and then, looking restless. Finally, she breaks the silence. Are you, like, mad at me that I asked you to come along to visit Victoria? Ooh, are you mad? You could have, like, declined the invitation, Rod. And if you would, like, tell me what's happened between the two of you, I would do my best to remedy the situation. Rod notices me looking at him and scowls. He returns his moody gaze to the window. I have nothing to say, Em. Well, you used to be, like, good friends with Victoria too, Rod. But then, ever since you were... Emma stops herself, but I know that she is referring to his curse. After that day, you, like, keep your distance from her. Then when you found out about the wedding, you became even colder towards her. Don't tell me Rod had a crush on her. Even Victoria's worried about you, Rod. She worries that she might have offended you somehow. Emma, because it, in the Little Mermaid, in the first one, not the, uh, the, the second one, uh, Ursula takes... Basically, the Ariel's hus uh, hus husband to be Eric, and poses as a human girl, and basically takes her man. I wonder if this is kind of a similar situation. I can only wonder. There is a hint of warning in his tone. Is it possible that Victoria is related to, to Rod's curse, considering the, the timing? Emma opens her mouth again to say something, but then suddenly stops and returns to the window, her expression mirroring Rod's own gloom. We are all silent until we arrive at the toy shop. Emma, good to see you again, and you too. Catherine, was it? I nod in acknowledgement. Victoria nods politely at the knight, who stands guard at the shop door. It's just the two of you today? Oh! Emma and I both turn only to see that Rod has in indeed vanished. Emma frowns, looking both bewildered and disappointed. He was right behind us. I will go look for him. Thank you, Catherine. Okay, gotta go find him. Just as I expected, Rod is leaning against the window of the an alley just outside the toy shop. Just, just, I mean, he, he probably doesn't want to talk to me. Just stay with him. I can tell by Rod's different posture that anything I say to him will fail on deaf ears. 
so I moved to stand next to him instead. I leaned against the wall with him. What are you doing? Uh, I don't know, honestly. Keeping you company? Rod raises an eyebrow at me. Since when have you ever even liked my company? Well, I'd rather be here than stay inside the toy shop and listen to Emma and Victoria talk. So you're not here to try and get me to talk? Well, it's not as if you would answer any of my questions. I have tried uh, forcing you. Catherine, how could you force him? And know how inefficient it is. But I will be here if you want to talk. Rod eyes me suspiciously. Since when did you start listening to others? I actually don't have an answer to that question. When you are the personal maid of someone who enjoys talking, you learn to listen. I don't have a point. Emma has been happier over happier these past few months. I hate to admit it, but it seems to be because of you. Oh. Are you actually praising me? Oh. Rod looks away, his cheeks tinted pink. Think whatever you like. I do not know why, but for some reason I am happy that Rod gave me a compliment. Because way that means we're becoming friends. Yes. Friends. Princess Catherine. Rod and I turn at the sound of the familiar voice. Walt pauses in front of us with a bright smile. Hey, Walt. It's a nice to see you again, Princess. Walt, what are you doing here? Well, I was about to deliver a letter to the to the prince, but I guess that won't be necessary anymore. A letter? Is Lady Parfait asking for me? No, not just you. She wants to see the princess as well. Me? It has been a while since I last left. La since I was last at the Martian. Is something wrong? They need to discuss something important with the princess. Come to the Martian tonight. Tonight, but we are already here, so why not now? Walt's eyes shift to our carriage. You are here with Princess Emma, yes? You can't make her wait too long. What they need to discuss with you is complicated and will take some time to explain. The toy shop door opens and Emma stands in the doorway as she says her goodbyes to Victoria. Remember, tonight. These are Walt's last words before he slips back into the crowd. Like a ninja. Emma's visit with Victoria was briefer than I thought it would be. Now all of us are headed back to the palace. Rod has not uttered a word on our way back. I can tell that this is making Emma agitated as she continues to keep glancing at Rod expectantly. If you have something to say, say it. Oh, <gasps> Catherine, Emma stares at me. You only want to say something to Prince Rod. The only way to get your answers is to ask him directly. Rod does not turn around. It is as if he does not hear me. Emma claps her hands and sighs. Well... I glance at Rod, who still persistently stares at the window, his eyes focused on nothing. He is pretending not to hear us. How immature. Rod? Victoria Lex was very sad that you weren't there today. She was, like, certain that you stayed outside to avoid seeing her. What's going on with you? I am not in the mood to answer your questions, Em. Emma grips the edges of her dress. Her expression becoming more rigid. You've been, like, keeping secrets from us ever since you were cursed. We didn't even know why you were cursed or how to help you break it. Wait, the rest of the family doesn't know anything about the circumstance of Rod's curse? What? I had thought that he told them everything, but all they know is that he is cursed? We're like family. We're supposed to help each other through problems. 
Emma's hands are shaking as she gazes at her brother. M. The carriage stops, and as soon as the servant opens the door, Emma quickly steps out and rushes back towards the palace. Rod watches her go quietly, though his bright eyebrows are furred and he looks guilty. I suddenly shake my head at him before running after Emma. Emma stands in the hallway with her hands to her chest. She breathes slowly in and out, as if she is on the verge of tears. When she notices me behind her, she turns away and wipes her eyes with the back of her hand. I'm like, sorry for storming off like that. I was just very frustrated at Rod. I said something I shouldn't have said back there. If anyone finds out about this, they won't. Your secret is safe with me. Emma flashes a grateful smile before looking at the sky. M. One moment Rod is running down the hallway. The next he has stopped in front of us and is trying to catch his breath. M. I'm sorry. <gasps> I'm like sorry too, Rod. But right now I would like, like to be alone. Oh, you hurt her feelings. Of course. I'm sorry, Catherine, but could you, like, leave me for now? She does not even wait for my answer before walking away, leaving me alone with Rod. You made her cry, Rod. I am fully aware of that. Why are you hiding your curse from your family? You wouldn't understand. I am doing this to protect them. Protect them? Rod silently shakes his head. They wouldn't understand. Those are the last ominous wor words Rod speaks before rushing off, leaving me alone in the hall. What happened to him? Catherine, are you interested? <gasps> yes, friendship. The hallways are silent at the, this time of night, as most everyone in this palace prepares for bed. I am now on my way to our meeting place. Rod told me earlier to wait for him here. I had thought that he was going to make me go to the Martian by myself after what transpired with Emma, but I was wrong. Emma was so upset today. I have never seen her like this before. I turned my thoughts back to the Martian and to what Walt said earlier. I wonder what Parfait wants to talk with us about. I feel my heart beating erratically against my chest. Why do I feel like something bad is going to happen? Oh gosh. I realize that I have been standing in the open for a while. Perhaps I should move. People might find my standing here suspicious. I start walking again, and I'm surprised when I feel a hand close around my wrist and pull me into the darkness. I open my mouth, but a hand muffles my scream. Shh! Rod? Rod's gaze is icy. He speaks quietly, but I can feel the anger simmering underneath his words. What if someone saw you just standing there? Have you even thought about how they might get suspicious? I, I, well, I did just think about that. His tone so accursedly that for a moment I cannot find my voice. But then he is right. I should have been more careful. Sorry. Rod stares at me, surprised. What? I never thought I'd hear you apologize, especially to me. Oh, well, at least I know how to apologize, unlike you. <laughs> and why would I ever have reason to ap apologize to you? Because you have done nothing but treat me coldly, even when I have done nothing to personally attack you. Rod scowls at me, but does not say anything. Instead, he sighs and takes my hand, pulling me after him. Oh. Where are we going? What? Let's go before the guard sees us. I have no energy to argue with Rod, so I allow him to pull me along. Oh, this is awkward. I'm sorry. What? He apologized to me? Don't make me repeat myself. I did not hear you clearly. There's one thing I know about you, is that you're not deaf. Of course I'm not. Shh, someone will hear you. I glare at Rod, but he does not respond. What is it, Sebi? 
Princess, your hand is really warm. Oh. Rod freezes in place and glares at Sevi, who seemingly, who seems to be shrugging. Your thoughts are too loud, Rod. Through the dim light, I can actually see a faint blush on Rod's cheeks. Why is he blushing? You are blushing. Oh gosh, she caught you, mean. I am not. He lets go of my hand and starts to walk towards the secret passage with me trailing behind him. We look around to make sure no one is inside before we both slip inside. I follow closely behind Rod in silence. My eyes move upwards to the little bunny plush hanging on his shoulder. Sebi, I've been wondering, have you ever talked with Rod's family as yourself? Rod suddenly stops and scowls over his shoulder at me. What? I'm asking Sebi, not you. No, I don't, princess. Rod doesn't want me to talk with others since he thinks that I might say something unnecessary. So much for that. You still speak, even when it's unnecessary. In the dim lighting of the tunnel, I think I can see a faint pink in Rod's cheeks, but it is probably a trick of the strange lighting. Rod is right. Sebi has blurted out his thoughts more than a number of times. Hmm. Well, there are thoughts he prefers to keep to himself, like his thoughts on karma and his feminine voice or his... Rod suddenly clamps Sebi's face, and I actually see the poor plush struggling to get away from his hold. You're crushing the poor toy. Rod glares at me before finally releasing Sebi. Rod can be so brutal at times. I remember the time he almost threw me out the window for saying that one lady had a hearing aid stress. Rod glares at Sebi once again. He readies his fingers to pinch him again, but Sebi hurries the apologize before Rod can touch him. Okay, okay, I'll stop talking now. Rod sighs and continues walking. Rod, have you spoken with Emma since that incident earlier? Earlier incident? No. As much as I want to ask him again about his curse, I doubt that he will divulge anything right now. I decided to keep my thoughts to myself as I, we head to, for the Martians. 